So when it comes to gear on this YouTube channel, I have a general rule that I keep. And that is, if it's not something that I would use in the real world, on a gig, on a session, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm not going to feature it here. Now with that in mind, I never thought I'd be making today's video. When Fender originally reached out to me to check out the Deluxe Reverb Tone Master, I actually said, no, I'm not interested. That's not something that I would use ever in the real world. So maybe we could do something else. Maybe you guys could send me the Ventera series Telecaster to check out, which they did. And I'm actually giving it away. Link down below. Now in that email exchange, the artist rep was super kind and said, yeah, we'd love for you to check out the Ventera series, but Let's send the deluxe reverb anyways. No strings attached. They weren't asking for a video. They weren't asking for anything. They just wanted me to check it out. So a few days later, it showed up in the mail and I have to admit, I let it sit in the box for a while. I had a stigma against this thing. I didn't think I would be into it at all. So I just didn't open it. But after a few days, curiosity got the better of me and I cracked it open, flipped it on and started playing it. And I was surprised. Before we go any further, let's talk about some of the specs and features on this thing. If you're not familiar, this is a solid state modeling amp that is modeled after the Deluxe Reverb reissue. There are no tubes in this thing. It's not a hybrid amp or anything like that. It is completely digital. On the outside, it looks exactly like a normal Deluxe Reverb reissue, except for the little Tone Master badge on the bottom right hand corner, you actually couldn't really tell the difference between this and its tube brother unless you looked at the back of the amp. And on the back of the amp, we have some features that you wouldn't find on the tube deluxe, mainly a DI out with two different impulse responses and an attenuator switch to go from the full 22 watts that a normal deluxe reverb has all the way down to half a watt. <laughs> So let's address the most important aspect of this amp, the tone. How does it sound? How does it feel? Now, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that it is exactly like the tube amp because the reality is it's not. There are some differences in the overall tone, but mainly the response between this amp and the tube deluxe. Now, I don't own a deluxe reverb reissue. I never have, but I've been gigging and touring for years, which means I've used dozens of deluxe reverb reissues on festival stages and backline bars. I know that amp pretty well. The Tone Master being solid state is sharper in its response. You get a quicker, tighter response. You feel the transient of each note coming through. And it also has more top end presence. It's brighter than the tube amp is. I think that's probably down to the speaker. They did create and voice a specific speaker for the Tone Master that you're not gonna find in the Deluxe Reverb. But I wonder if swapping the speaker from a normal off-the-shelf Deluxe, what it would do for the Tone Master. My guess is it would actually make it worse, but maybe that's another video. So the response is different than the tube amp. It's not worse, it's just different. And it's exactly what I would expect from a solid state amp, tighter, quicker, faster response than something with a tube rectifier like the Deluxe Reverb reissue. But outside of those two things, they're pretty close. I mean, astonishingly close. And that's what surprised me. Now, this video is not a direct head-to-head -head between the tube amp and the solid state amp. There's already plenty of those out there online for you to check out. But in my own personal experience, the way this amp feels overall 
is really close to the tube amp, especially the way it breaks up. I think Fender did a really good job at modeling the natural amp distortion that you get from a deluxe reverb once you start to push that volume knob past five. The digital reverb on the Tone Master sounds really good. In fact, it's so close to the original amp that they both have the same issue, which is once you get past about two on the reverb knob, you've got too much reverb. My only real gripe on the digital amp, tonally speaking, is the tremolo. I don't like it. I don't like the way it feels. I don't think it feels close enough to the real amp. But if you're the type of player that never uses the onboard tremolo or you rely on a modulation pedal for that type of effect, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. But to me, that's the biggest difference between the Tone Master and the Deluxe Reverb reissue. <laughs> Tone isn't my favorite part about this amp. It's cool that they were able to get close to the real thing, but to me, that's not that impressive. When you have things like the Kemper and the Axe FX and the Helix that are capable of really nailing some amp like and lifelike tones, the fact that they just put that in a deluxe reverb body isn't all that impressive. The things I really love about this amp are what make it stand out against its tube-driven brother. First of all, the weight. I mean, I can literally pick it up sitting down with one arm. If you try doing that with the tube-driven deluxe, you probably pull your arm out of your socket. Now, the reality is, compared to a lot of other amps, tube deluxes aren't that heavy either, but the best two features of this amp are on the back, the power scaling feature and the DI out with the built-in impulse responses. The attenuator switch is really useful, especially for working guitar players. Even on the biggest stages nowadays, we have to be mindful of stage volume. And believe it or not, this amp is loud. It's 100 watts. And being able to dial the amp in for whatever room or stage you're playing is an incredibly useful feature for us working guitar players. And the DI out with the built-in impulse responses. This is definitely my favorite thing about this amp. If you're new to home recording, but you don't have a huge budget to drop into microphones, you can easily record this amp into any interface. Or if you run in-ears a lot, you can run this DI into your in-ear monitor rig and send that to front of house while just using the cabinet for stage volume. Okay, so I've actually just had an idea that I wanna try uh, that I had while in the middle of filming these sound examples. I think you can utilize the DI out on the back to basically turn this mono normal sounding deluxe reverb into a stereo rig and possibly even a poor man's wet dry wet rig. I haven't tried this. I don't know if it'll work, but what I'm gonna do is take the DI out on the back and put it through some stereo effects. Maybe something like the new uh, synesthesia from GFI and a delay like the Volante or something. Something that can take mono in and push a good stereo effect out. And then I'm gonna use this. This is a new DI that Pinstripe Pedals sent out to me. And this is designed for digital rigs. It's designed for things like the HX Stomp where you can essentially take quarter inch in and split it out to XLR stereo or you can sum to mono or you can go quarter inch out. But this thing's pretty cool. It's got a Jensen transformer in it and it's designed specifically for guitar players who are using the digital rig. So I'm gonna try this setup and see how it sounds.
So, overall, the Samp's not perfect but neither is a deluxe reverb reissue. This amp is not supposed to be able to take on any of these amps over here, and neither is a deluxe reverb reissue. See, a normal deluxe reverb is like the Honda Civic of the amp world. It's not fancy, it's not fast, but it's reliable, it's affordable, you know it's gonna get the job done, and you know it's gonna get you where you need to go. And when you look at it that way, it makes total sense that Fender would do this with the Deluxe Reverb platform. It's like Honda releasing a Civic Hybrid. This is still a Deluxe Reverb. It sounds like a Deluxe, and it does the job any Deluxe Reverb needs to do. But it's lighter, cheaper, and has more features than the Tube Amp does. I see this as a working player's amp. This is something to be taken out used and abused in bars, clubs, rehearsals, something that you don't really have to worry about if somebody kicks it over on a bar gig or God forbid a drink gets spilled on it, which has happened to me before. Like the tube amp, it's a utility piece. It's a tool for a job. It's designed to get a job done. And when I look at it that way, if I were in the market for a deluxe reverb today, I would buy the Tone Master over the Tube Amp. I think it's better at its job than the Tube Amp. The lighter weight, the added features, the fact that it sounds close enough to the original that especially in the context of a live gig or rehearsal, you're not going to ever hear the difference. I think this is the better amp. They're not perfect. I think Fender has some room to grow on this idea and this platform, but overall, I think this is really encouraging. I wanna see more amp companies start to do this in the future. I wanna see Vox do this. I wanna see Marshall do this. Give us reliable, great sounding, easy to use amps that are true to the originals with modern features that working players can afford and use. So let me know what you think about the Tone Master in the comments section down below. Have you played one yet? Are you trying to play one? Are you gonna buy one? I wanna know. Also, to be entered into the Ventera Tele giveaway, click the link in the pinned comment down below. It'll have all of the details needed for entry. It'll also have the giveaway date as I haven't picked one yet at the time of filming this video. I wanna say thank you to Fender for sending out the guitar to give away and the amp to check out. If you want more information on the amp or the guitar, I'll have links to the Fender website down in the description box below. Also check out the new merch designs that we just launched. These are seasonal merch designs only available for a limited time. I'm really excited about these. A good friend of mine here in Atlanta, Georgia designed these specifically for the YouTube channel. If you're interested in that, that's all linked down below. You can also find my Helix presets, Kemper profiles, and links to the green room, which is where you can directly support the channel. All that's down below. I'm Rhett Scholl. Thanks for watching, and remember there is no plan B.